Assalamualaikum. Hello. Today you're going to be with me, Madam Shaz, and we'll be looking at writing. Now, today's topic is about something that you are very familiar with, which is writing an email. I know you are very familiar. You've been doing that. You've been uh, writing, uh, doing exercises on writing an email since you were in Form One, right? But what would it be different? this year okay now um, writing an email is very direct when you were in the um, lower secondary it is um, the, the the sentences are shorter the task is very direct okay uh, you don't have to write very long your words are also simpler lower level but now you are in form 4 you have to up your game okay so how do you do that of course, you have to use better words, better vocabulary. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you want to say that you saw, you heard an accident and you went over and you saw this scene, all right? And then how do you explain it, that you are too shocked? You said, I stopped because I was too shocked, okay? All right? Now, a better level, a B2 level in Form 4, Form 5, you should be saying, when I arrived at the scene, I froze. Yes, the word froze is a B2 level for too shocked to say anything or even to move. But not I was frozen. I was frozen is different. It would mean that you become an I statue. All right, so we don't want that. Yep. So let's start. Now, um, when writing an email uh, in Form 4 and Form 5, it is slightly, um, the, the, the level is slightly higher, which means that the, the sound of the email may sound more spontaneous like, uh, more towards like a native speaker's way of writing. What I meant by native means people who speak English as their first or their mother tongue. For example, the people, uh, the people in the United States or the United Kingdom or even in Australia and many other parts of the world. Okay, now... Um, when we go over their email, you will see that they use lots of words uh, that is somewhat uh, different from us. Okay, when they want to say something, it's different. When they even ask something, it sounds different from the way we ask. Our way of asking is very direct. Okay, so we need to know, okay, what do they mean uh, by that and respond to the question asked. Okay, so when writing an email, when you want to answer an email question, you have to understand what it is what is the situation here. That means who writes the email. Okay? Is it from a pamper? Is it from a law friend? Is it from cousins? From sister, brothers? Okay. They will have different tone. And then you have to look at the reasons for writing. Alright? Reasons for writing, and then you have to look at what are they talking about? What's the main topic of the email? And then of course the language that you're going to use because the language that you use for your friends would be different from your uh, from your siblings to your brother or sister you'll be different and even to your mother okay now let's go on now if you look at page 18 so let's take a look at page 18 we are going to read this email from Simon to Mark together as you read, I need you to identify some of the information that will answer the questions above. Hello Mark, how are things? I haven't heard from you for ages. In this word, in this sentence, the word ages means a long time. Anyway, I've got some great news. As you know, I've been nagging my parents to get me a laptop for a long time. Now take a look at the word nagging in this sentence. 
It means to persuade somebody to do something to your liking using frustration and also if conditionals. Okay, in Malay words, normally we say berletir. Well, guess what? They are getting me one for my birthday, which, by the way, is in two days. Isn't that incredible news? I will need to use my dad's ancient computer anymore and I'll be able to organize all my music files and films. Take a look at the word ancient in this sentence. Here it means a very long time. Now see that this Simon, okay, this writer Simon, is using a lot of words that are extreme. Okay, he, he is using extreme words to show his feeling and also opinion. Now let's take a look at the next uh, paragraph. Here's some more exciting news. I'm having a party on Saturday. Would you like to come? Okay, now there is a question here. Okay, to Mark. Now, when Mark replied this letter, he has to say whether he is coming or turn down this invitation. Okay? You know, we haven't seen you since you changed schools. And it'll be a good opportunity to see your old friends. What do you think? Well, that's all for now. Write back with all your news. Okay, take a look at this sentence. Write back with all your news. It means Simon would like to hear news from Mark too. So, in the reply letter, Mark has to tell Simon about his news. I hope you can make it to my party. Yours, Simon. Now let's see if we can answer the questions above. Who is writing the email? Let's write Simon. Why is this person writing? Yes, the first reason is because he wants to tell Mark that he is getting a new laptop and the second part of this email is he is inviting Mark to come over for his birthday party. The third question is what set phrases are used to begin and end the email? Set phrases means the language used to start the sentence, the, the email. For example, how are things? I haven't heard from you for ages. So that is the set phrases. And how did he end this email? Well, that's all for now. Right back with all your news. I hope you can make it to my party. So, I hope you can make it to my party is a set phrase to end the email. Now, question four. What makes the email informal? Can you guess? That's right. You can see that it is informal from the way he writes well, guess what? And also he said, by the way, and he also used lots of contractions. For example, haven't, I've, there, isn't, won't. So those are the key, key word to show that it is informal. Okay. And then there are also direct questions such as how are things? Isn't that incredible news? Okay. So that is the sign that it is in formal language. Now, you have seen the email sent by Simon. What we're going to do next is we're going to look at how Mark replied to Simon's email. Hi Simon, sorry I haven't written for so long, but I've been quite busy with school work. Thanks for the invitation, mate. Okay, I would like you to take a look at this sentence. Thanks for the invitation, mate. The word mate means friend. And this is a very common phrase that people in the United Kingdom use to say thank you to. So normally they say thanks, mate or chess mate to their friends or to somebody of the same age. You don't say 
thanks mate or cheers mate to your teacher or someone older because mate means somebody of the same age. Now let's continue. You know I wouldn't miss your party for the world, so count me in. I'm really glad you are finally getting a laptop. Now it'll be easier to keep in touch and we can maybe play some online games. Let me know if you need any more songs for the party. Now let me fill you in with my news. My new school is okay and I'm doing quite well. However, I haven't made many friends yet. There's this one guy though from my science class who seems quite interesting and is absolutely hilarious. Okay, the word hilarious in this sentence means funny. He's into hip-hop like me and actually raps quite well. So, we're thinking of creating a band together. Okay, the word rap here means to sing without uh, music background. Without background music. By the way, do you mind if I bring him along to your party? We can perform if you like. Say hello to everyone. See you soon, Mark. Now let's take a look at page 19. Look at the expressions that you can use in this email. Here are some phrases that you can use to show enthusiasm. Well, that's great, wonderful, I am happy, I was happy, I'm glad. I'm pleased to, to hear that. I couldn't believe it when I read that. Now, when you want to accept an invitation, you can use these phrases. Sounds brilliant. Perfect. Sure. Thanks for inviting me to your party. Thanks for asking me to join you. <laughs> How could I say no? Also, it means that I will, I will not say no. I will, I will definitely come. Count me in. That means, yes, I will come. If you are not going to the birthday party, that means you are refusing an invitation, you can use these phrases. I'm sorry, but I have to go somewhere. Maybe some other time. I'm afraid I can't make it because I have to help my mother. It was nice of you to invite me but I've already made other plans. Unfortunately, I'll have to let you down. So the word I have to let you down means I have to turn you down, to turn the invitation down. Now, what about giving news? You can use these phrases. Well, here's the latest. That means you are going to tell about your latest news. Let me fill you in. You won't believe what happened to me the other day. So this is the set phrase, okay? To say that you are going to tell about your news. You asked me to tell you about... So here goes. Here's an update of what's happening in my life. Now let's see if you can use the phrases or expressions above to fill in this question. The first one, my friend and I are going camping this weekend. Do you want to join us? And you have to answer, you can't because you have flu. Now, which expression are we going to use to refuse the invitation? That's right. I'm sorry I can't make it because I have flu. Now, how about the second question? Guess what? I passed all my exams. How are we going to reply to this statement to say that we are also happy? Fantastic. So, which expression should we use to show enthusiasm? That's right. We can say, wow, that's wonderful news. Now, it's your turn to answer number three and four. Write it down in your English one. Now that you have seen uh, how 
uh, Mark replied to Simon and then we have gone through the expressions to be used in an email and what are the options that we can uh, choose okay instead of saying this we can use this way of saying all right you are going to write an email what you're going to do is you're going to answer page 19 uh, practice e in this question you are going to imagine that you are a simon's friend okay and you will also send her an email like for example written by simon here but what you are going to reply is you are not going to accept the invitation by simon okay you will be the opposite of mark all right you will you will um turn down the invitation okay you will decline the in invitation now what you can do is you may use the sample written by mark to help you write the email okay but please remember you have to turn down or decline the invitation by simon all right now to help you out there is uh, there is a plan okay in page 19 there are some sample language to be used in your email so you can choose any uh, opening sentence to write your sentences well i hope you have been able to distinguish different style of writing when you go to when you are now in form 4 and going to form 5 so i hope um, it will change the way you write and i hope you can upgrade your style of writing and hope to see you soon assalamualaikum and stay safe